Okay, um, welcome to um, this week's lab. So this week, uh, in this lab, we will learn that the basic calculation functions are in Tableau desktop. Uh, so calculations are very important in Tableau. Uh, sometimes the data or the measures that we want to analyze or visualize may not be available directly. So that means we need to create those new calculations by using those um, calculation functions in Tableau. We will also create a story so that uh, to share our analysis with others in the um, way that uh, so it's it's like a PowerPoint that uh, we capture the snapshot of our visualizations and uh, which we think are very interesting and we display those uh, results to our um, audience. And we will also use the COVID-19 data uh, as a data sample. So. The COVID-19 data is uh, can be downloaded from this 1.3 acre. Okay, so you can again you can apply for your own API, or you can use the URL um, that I provided uh, on Canvas. We will also need to uh, integrate the data with the total population and also median household income. Uh, so the data can be collected from the uh, U.S. Census uh, website. So they have. Uh, the data that contains a lot of um, uh, social economic variables like income, gender, race, population, etc. So um, I'm using the API that sensors provided. And this is a Python code that I used to, uh, to download the population and also the median household income. So the population variable is this and the median household income variable is this. So you can check the census website and to find out the variables that you are interested. And if you want to download your own data, uh, you can go to my GitHub and you can use this Python code. Uh, first, you have to click, uh, you have to request your API keys and you can modify this uh, Python code to download the data that uh, you are interested. So, so for the media, um, income and also population. So you can also download the data from the GitHub because uh, the data will, uh, will not change. So the data is from, I think is estimated uh, data in 2019. Okay, so let's download the CSV file. It should be a CSV file. And you can also download the um, uh, the COVID data from the URL that provided on Canvas. Okay, uh, so you can see here, this is uh, population income. Uh, so I don't know why it is in a TXT extension, but we need to change that one to CSV extension. And the cases, so those are the COVID-19 cases in each county. Let's also uh, change that one to CSV extension. Okay, dot CSV. All right, uh, so before we start Tableau desktop, uh, we need uh, to use the Tableau prep to clean the data and also to join both tables. Uh, so let's start Tableau prep. Okay, and let's uh, connect to our data. Uh, so both are considered txt file. So let's click text file. And again, we put everything in the OneDrive folder, uh, lab 9. So first, let's bring the cases. OK, uh, so here we can see, uh, let's change the names. So the first one is date. OK, uh, we also have state the county and we have the number of cases and number of deaths okay and let's uh, not use recover account because not all the counties are reporting recovered data uh, so I'm going to uncheck recovers and FIPS is a unique ID for each single county so that should be in a string format so let's change that one to the string format Okay, uh, so now let's add a clean step. Uh, so let's preview the data. 
OK, uh, so here this is a preview of the data. And uh, we have some recommendations. You can see here. Uh, so let's change the state uh, into a geographic rules. So let's change that one to state. Uh, we can also change the counties uh, into counties. OK, and let's also remove the records that do not have FIPS. OK, so if we select the none of the FIPS, uh, all the other columns, that corresponding columns will be highlighted. OK, so let's exclude the records that do not have FIPS. OK, and now you can see here for the state, uh, the states that have escalation markers are gone because those are the place that are not uh, actually are not a real state, so that's why they don't have FIPS. Uh, we also see some problem for the cases and also deaths because we saw those uh, negative numbers. Again, those are just I believe those are some errors <laughs> of their data. Uh, so let's also filter out those negative values. So let's go to filter the range of the values. Let's say the minimal should be zero. Okay, the minimal should be zero and put that one down. And for the death, let's also do the same thing. So the range of the filter, let's say the minimal is zero. Okay, so we filled out uh, the records that are not accurate. Um, OK, so that looks pretty good for the cases. And now let's bring um, on the population data. So again, it is a TXT file. So that is one that I downloaded from my GitHub. And here we can see on the first field, that is total population. So I just call it population. And the second field is income, so household median income. OK, and this is the name. So that is the name of the county in which state. And this is the FIP number of the state, uh, which should be in the string format. And this is the FIT, FIPS number of the county, which should also be in this uh, string format. All right, uh, now let's preview the data. OK, and we see some. Uh, the populations, uh, the income, and also we see different counties, county names, and also state. So if you choose state one, um, you can see that is Alabama. Okay, and state five is Arkansas, and also you can see the counties. Okay, uh, so now we want to join those two tables together. So if you look at the case number, case data and you can see we have the FIPS for each single record. So that is FIPS uh, for each county. And if you look at the population and the income, so here we see that we have the FIP for state and also FIP for uh, the county in that state. OK, so uh, the syntax of FIPS is that we have two digits for the state and we have three digits for the county. OK, so if we combine those two together and uh, we will have uh, the entire FIPS uh, code for each single county. OK, uh, so let's create a new step. Let's say we want to create a calculated field. For this one, we call it F FIPS uh, calculated, OK, which equals state plus county. OK, so this is the field calculation uh, where the fields are surrounded by curly bracket. Oh, sorry, by surrounded by the square uh, square bracket. OK, so here we calculate FIPS and that is state plus county. Let's save it. OK, so now we have this FIPS that is calculated. Uh, so let's name this step population income 
clean and let's name this step uh, cases clean all right so now we can join those two data set so let's drag this one and create and join and now you have to choose based on which field so let's use fips uh, equals fips okay uh, and we can decide which type of the join we are going to use um, so here by default uh, we are using this inner join okay and let's just show the unmatched values so let's check uh, this box and uh, so you can see it is still uh, calculating so let's wait a few seconds okay uh, so now you can see that uh, for the counties population we have 150 uh, um, records are not matched okay so those are the counties that we cannot find out the corresponding records in the COVID cases so that might be cause either we don't have data from those counties um, or uh, we have wrong uh, FIPS uh, in the cases. And for the cases, we can see we have almost 1,000 records. We cannot find out the matching FIPS for the income and also uh, population. But actually, if you look at all those unmatched FIPS, so we have uh, actually less than 10 counties that cannot be matched uh, from this uh, census data so which is not a big deal I would say uh, so for example I, I, I check this one and this is in the Virginia so that is a county in Virginia and I, I really went back to census and on census we no longer have this FIPS so I guess either they used a wrong uh, data in the COVID-19 uh, 1.3 acres or sometimes the FIPS might have changed okay uh, so that is also uh, possible okay so again we have only um, let's say uh, seven counties that we cannot find out the matched records from population uh, so which is fine although from those uh, seven counties we have more than 900 cases okay so let's export the data so let's add an export uh, actually before we export uh, let's add one more step so let's uh, let's add one more step so that uh, we want to remove some duplicated records okay uh, so for example, we no longer you need the FIPS calculated because we already have the FIPS. Okay, and now we have two state names. Uh, one is from the original state. Okay, and one is from the sensors. Okay, uh, so it's up to you. So I'm going to remove uh, this one from the. Uh, COVID, so remove the state and also county from COVID data because I, uh, when talking about the, oh, actually I should not because the state and also county from sensors are uh, FIP numbers. So fortunately I can go back uh, so I can say uncheck those remove action Okay, so I will still keep the state name and also county name, but I will remove the state and also county uh, that from sensors because those are also FIPS. Okay, and this name is no longer needed. Okay, so we have case ID, uh, date, and this I will call it still state and this is county we have number of cases a number of deaths and also fips okay and now we have the population and also income which is great okay so now i think we are ready to export so export and we can 
and choose where we want to save the data. So let's again save everything to our OneDrive folder, uh, Lab 9. So this one I call it COVID and POP and income. Okay, so COVID cases, population and also income. Okay, and now we can run this flow. Okay, so that will export uh, the cleaned and also joined data uh, into the format of the Tableau extract. Okay, and let's also save this flow. So that means in the later when we have new cases, we can bring the cases into this flow and we can rerun it. Or if, for example, if you have the new data in 2020 and you can replace that one um, with 2020 data and you can rerun it. So let's also save the flow. Okay. So let's call it uh, lab nine. Okay, so now we can close uh, Tableau uh, prep. Okay, so now we have cases, we have the publish and income. Those are the original data. And we have the cleaned data that being extracted. And we have the flow data so that if you want to repeat this cleaning uh, process and you can do that again. Okay, so now let's uh, click this hyper Tableau extract so that will bring up on the Tableau desktop okay so here and um, we bring our uh, data into Tableau desktop and we can see all the data are cleaned uh, so before I start I also want to add uh, a one filter so that for the dates and the reason we are going to do that is because later on we want to to visualize the data based on the number of the weeks and we want the whole week okay so make sure that you choose the last Saturday as the ending date so for example if today is um, Sunday so that I choose the last Saturday is 30th and if you are working this one on on the Wednesday and you should choose the previous Sunday Saturday okay so the reason is to make sure that uh, we're using the whole week in the date calculation. Okay, and, and also remember that the data we have is just always one day um, late. So that uh, if today is Sunday and the data we had, we downloaded it on Sunday, that data is only update, updated up to Saturday. Okay, so let's make that one. Um, as a data source filter, so that filter will apply to all the uh, sheets, all the calculations. So now if we go to the uh, uh, create our first sheet, so before we creating the sheets, so let's do some calculations. So first, let's calculate the death rate. So death rate is the number of cases divided by the, sorry, the number of deaths divided by the number of cases. So let's see death rate. Okay, so you may think that is number of deaths divided by the number of cases. Okay, so is that really true? Okay, so let's look at the data. So uh, to uh, to speed up the queries, so let me do a filter. Here, let's say I would just want the data in Virginia. Okay, so let's use Virginia data as an example. So let's bring uh, the V data. Uh, now let's bring the cases, deaths, and also death rate as a table. Let's also choose the death rate into percentage. Okay, so that is a number format and let's use percentage. We can see the death rate is zero. Uh, we wish it is zero, but is that true? So let's look at the county level. Okay, and it is still zero. Okay, but we do see that we do have deaths in that county. And now if we drag the case ID. Okay, and now at the case level, and there are zeros that may make sense because we do have zero cases divided by number of cases, or we do have zero deaths divided by the cases, that is zero. Um, and also in some cases, you can see for example in this one, we have one death, but we have zero cases. So 
example. So that means the death rate is non-value because uh, one um, divide zero, so that will generate errors. Okay, so why? So why is that happens? So we can see that at the case levels, okay, uh, we have uh, zeros, which may make sense, okay? But why at the county level, they are still zeros? So that is a very important concept in Tableau that is called aggregation. So when we calculate the case rate, so Tableau will first calculate uh, these values at the row level, and they will aggregate back to the level of the details in the view. So that is because at the row levels, for some reason, they are all calculated as zeros. Now we aggreg aggregate it to the county levels, so that those are all the zeros summed together. So that is a case rate at the county level, and similarly at the state level. So that's why that we have this um, zeros uh, that falls at the state level and also at the county level. Okay, uh, so to resolve that issues, we should aggregate the cases and also um, that's first. So let's say sum of the cases divided by the sum of the that uh, 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 sum of the deaths divided by the sum of the cases. Okay, so that means at no matter which level you're looking at, I want to calculate the total case and also co total deaths first, and then I want to calculate the ratio. Okay. Um, so now if we uh, bring the death rate back, we can see the death rate is updated. So now if you look at the counties, which which may look uh, which looks like right. Okay, so that is the aggregation concept. And if we bring the case IDs, okay, uh, we can see that at the case level most of them are still zeros, but we still have those scenarios that we have non values. Okay. So if we want to convert those non-values still into zero, so we can use that ZN function. So let's go back to the case uh, death rate calculation. So let's use ZN. So the ZN function means that if the result is a number, we will return the original number. If the result is non-value, so we will return zero. Okay, so let's update. And now you can see we have all the zeros. Okay, and uh, no matter in the county level or in the state level, so they are showing the correct. And here you can see the AGG. Okay, so that stands for the aggregation because the case rate is an aggregated value. So that means that it stands for the aggregation. All right, so that is the death rate. Now let's calculate the case rate. So case rate is number of cases divided by the population. Okay, so let's call it the case rate, which now you may know, okay, so I need to use aggregation first. Here I use cases divided by the sum of the population. Okay, and let's also change the format uh, into the percentage. Okay, and let's see, is that right? Okay, so that is also aggregated. Uh, we can see that the case rate for the county is pretty small. Okay, and now if we go to the state level, okay, and the case rate is also um, very small. But um, I just want to ask you, so is that accurate okay so let's bring the population into the table okay so now let's say at the county level okay so the case rate is this value divided by the total population and I live in Harrisonburg and I know Harrisonburg is a, a pretty small uh, city okay but if I look at the Harrisonburg population that is definitely not that case. I mean, Harrisonburg uh, does not have that many population. Okay, so why? Why is that? So now if we go back to the data source, 
uh, we can see that for the population, each single record has the total population. So that, for example, for this county, on this day, they have zero cases, deaths, and they have this population. On this day, the county has six cases and still have this population. So that means right now when we're calculating the case rate, we aggregate, we aggregate the population that uh, so that we duplicate the population multiple times. Okay, so that gave us a very, very huge population. Therefore, we have a wrong case rate. Okay, so this case rate is not accurate because the population has been aggregated um, in the wrong way. Okay, so how can we resolve that issue? So that is where we use the level of the detail expression. So here, let's say we want to calculate, create a new field. Let's call it fixed population. So now we are using the level of the details that is fixed uh, at the FIPS level. And we want the average population. OK, so what does that mean? So that means that so we want aggregate the population at FIPS levels because each county has a unique FIPS. And if we are looking at the, F the population at more granular level, for example, the case level, uh, the population will be duplicated. If we are looking at the, the, gr the raw level, so for example, like the county at the state level, the population will be aggregated. OK, so let's see what the difference. So let's bring the fixed population still as a sum. OK, and now if we go to the case IDs, we can see at the case level, the population and also fixed population are the same. OK, and now if we go to the county levels, we can see the fixed population is the population per county, so still the right number. But the, the population field has been aggregated in the wrong way, mistake, mistakenly. So therefore, the case rate is wrong. And now if we go to the state level, we can see this is the right population at Virginia. And this is the wrong population. So this probably is the entire population in the United States. OK, so that's why that uh, we should use the level of the detailed expression to resolve this issue. So now we have the fixed population. Uh, let's go back to change the case rate. So here we are using the total of the fixed population. OK, so now the case rate is 5%, which is the right one. OK, and now if you um, do a manual calculation, you can see for the population, for the case, you can see the case rate seems correct. And also at the state level, you can see the case rate. So that is the total cases divided by the population. That is 6%. OK, so that seems also right. All right, so that is the case rate. Uh, next, let's also add the other calculations. So the, the first one is we want to create a bin for the income. So that is very easy to create. So here we select income and let's create beans. And so here you can choose the size of the beans. So I'm going to use 5,000. OK, so this is actually a group. OK, and we will use that one later to, to use the beans. So that will group the data divided by the, in, the, in, uh, the house media income. Next, let's also create a new calculated field. Let's call it number of weeks. OK, so here we are using the table calculation. So if you go table calculations and we are going to use the index. OK, so index will retain the index of current rows in the partition. And we will use this one later in one of our chart. OK. All right, uh, so now we have other um, field that being um, created and let's save this workbook. OK, uh, so let's save that one as lab nine. 
OK, uh, so now we are ready to create uh, some visualizations. Uh, so first, uh, let's clean those. Um, result. OK, so first, let's create a line chart to show the number of cases and also number of deaths over the weeks. Uh, so let's use cases and also date. And we create a line chart. Uh, so we want the number of the weeks and also we want the date to be continuous. OK, and remember that we just filled out to the, the last entire whole week. And so here we do see that there's a declining of the cases in the past one to three weeks. OK, so that's nice. Um, let's also bring the deaths into this line chart. OK, and here we can see that uh, uh, we're still at the peak of the number of deaths, but we uh, the cases are declining over the uh, past few weeks. All right, um, so let's change those two into a uh, bar chart. OK. Uh, the reason I want to use bar chart is because I will also want to calculate the moving average, which is um, a table calculation in Tableau. So here, let's say uh, I copy and paste the number of cases. And now I uh, click this drop down and we can use some very nice um, table calculations. So here you can see you can use a running case or running total, percentage total, percentile, etc. And also you can also calculate the growth rate uh, depending on the dimensions that you selected. So here we let's look at the moving average. And let's also add it to this one. So here let's see for the moving average, let's see we want the previous um, three and also the next three values for the moving average. And you can choose whether or not you want non values if you don't have enough values. OK. All right. So that is moving average uh, for the cases. And let's change that one into a line chart. And let's create that as a dual X map. And let's also synchronize the axis. OK, so now you can see the moving average. Uh, let's do the same thing for the deaths. OK, uh, so table calculation and moving average. And let's add it. The calculations and so here I'm choose uh, previous three values and also next three values. And I change the type to a line chart. And I create a dual X map. And also, I want to uh, synchronize those values. OK, uh, you can also choose different colors. And we know that uh, uh, we should try to avoid using uh, red and also <laughs> uh, green combination. So let's go to all values, see edit colors. OK, and uh, so let's use the color blind. OK, I think that works pretty nice. OK, so the first thing, let's call it. Uh, cases and. deaths over. Weeks. All right, so that is our first uh, visualization. And next, let's also want to visualize the case rate and also the death rate, so let's Go to a new um, sheet and here let's see death rate date. This time we also use a line chart and let's also use number of the weeks. OK, and you can see we have very high death rate in in February. OK, and if you're interested, you, if you want to say, OK, is that error or something? So we can go to data. We can say, OK, the death rate is that high. And if we go to fall data and you will say, OK, so that is actually correct because we have very few cases. OK, but we have three deaths. OK, so that's why that we have very high death rate, aggregated death rate in those days. So that's just because we have few cases. 
Okay, and let's do some do the same thing for the case rate. Okay, and you can see that the case rate has been increased in the past few weeks and now has been declining. So similar as the number of cases that we saw earlier. Okay, and now we see that for the uh, death rate, we do have those uh, very high outliers. So let's add a median value. Okay, for the death rate. Okay, and uh, let's also uh, add it so that for the labels, we want to see that uh, field, that death rate, and the calculation is median, median death rate, um, colon, and let's bring the values. All right, now we can see the median death rate is this one. Okay, so that is not that high. All right, um, so that is for our second sheet. Um, so if you want to use different colors, um, for example, uh, the kiss rate and also death rate, if you want to use different colors, um, feel free to do that. Uh, so here I'm just use the default one, so just keep it simple. And this one is rate over time, over weeks. All right, so that is our second uh, uh, chart. Let's also visualize uh, the death rate and also case rate over state. So let's say case rate uh, state. Okay. Uh, so here we have the um, power plus map. So this is case rate state. And uh, let's duplicate this one. And uh, let's bring that one to the county level. And here for the colors, let's use diverging color. Okay, and I want to reverse that. So now we can see for the county, we do have some counties that have very high case rate. And this is case rate at the county. Okay, and let's do the same thing for the uh, death rate. So death rate at the state level. Okay, and we can see in New York, the death rate is pretty high. Uh, so that is death rate state. Okay, and let's also duplicate this one and let's uh, go to the county level. And here, let's also use a color um, orange blue diverging and now we can see those counties have very high uh, death rate so here this is death rate for county and also remember that we also created this beans so that is uh, uh, the range of the income so let's also use the beans and let's say for the beans for different range of the median income so what is the number of the cases Okay, let's rotate. And what is the number of the deaths? Okay, so here we can see that uh, the most of number of cases occurred uh, in the income range that is in this range. Okay, so median household income range. And that is also because uh, a lot of populations are, with, are distributed in this range. So if we drag the fixed uh, population into colors okay and we can see that is also range that we have a lot of uh, people that in this uh, income range okay so that is income range okay so i gave it a very uh, naive uh, title and lastly i want to see that how the median income is related uh, to the case rate Okay, at the state level. So I choose those both um, measures and I create this uh, scatter plot. Okay, and let me rotate this scatter plot. And for the income, I want to use the median income. Okay, 
So here, this is at the state at the the entire country level. So if I bring state, okay, and now we see that this is in a state level. So those are the count of the states that have high median income but have lower case rate. Okay, you can also switch that one to the death rate if you like. And you can see for the death rate, so it is slightly different, but let's just focus on the case rate uh, in this case. Okay, uh, and also those are the regions where the median income is lower, but have the higher case rate. Okay, uh, so let's drag a reference line um, into this chart. Okay, and let's use median. Okay, uh, for both, and let's do not change uh, the result when we select different markers. Okay, and for the labels, let's use. Uh, yeah, I think the computation is fine, so that shows that that is a median value. I actually let's just customize that one. So computation, and also the value. Okay, so that's the median income. Computation um, field. Okay, and let's edit this one. So this is also the median, and we don't want to change the reference line. And this is median case rate. Okay, so this is, let's name this one, income versus case rate at state level. And now you know that I'm going to duplicate this one and I want aggregate at the county level. Okay, and so this is county. So if you're interested, we can also add a reference line and you can see here at the state level, so the case rate, how the case rate can be explained by the median income. So the p-value is very significant. The r square is almost, uh, is above 10%, uh, which I believe will be lower if we look at at the county level. Okay, at the county level, r square is lower, but p-value still is a, a significant case. So that means median household income is a very important factor in the case rate. Okay, so let's drag those median house income out. All right, so now we have those sheets. Um, let's also do one more and uh, create one more sheet. So let's duplicate this one. Um, but in this one, I want to show the median income. So instead of the uh, death rate. Okay, so I want to show the median of the median income and the color I'm still going to use on that diverging color reversed okay and so now you can see a clear pattern that those counties and also those counties are very rich uh, we don't have a lot of data from the Utah state okay and so that's why that we saw those uh, blanks here uh, so let's name this one that is income at the county level okay uh, so now we have those sheets and i think from here it is very um i hope you are you already can see some very interesting um data on something that might be interested so uh, again please feel free to create the other calculations or the other sheets um, so that you are interested. So those are just give you some possible examples that how we can analyze the data. Okay, and so before we continue, actually I saw that I used uh, the wrong value for this uh, um, read over weeks sheet. So I should use a case read, not the number of cases. So I bring the case read here and I drag the sum of cases out. Okay, 
And actually, uh, let's also add a median range. So let's add median for the kiss as well. OK. And let's also customize on this line so that uh, customize uh, median kiss rate colon. And also let's bring the value here. OK, um, we can also, let's also change the colors a, a little bit. So let's see uh, for this one, for the first one, uh, let's yeah, I just choose some random colors. Um, OK, so probably uh, for the death rate. For the uh, for the death rate, I choose orange. Uh, for the kiss rate, and I still choose blue. OK, so that is just an error to fix. OK, all right. So now we have those uh, different sheets. Um, so let's, I think the one powerful way to visually analyze those visualization is to combine those sheets together. OK, uh, so let's um, combine those sheets onto some onto a dashboard. So here, let's create a new dashboard. Uh, let's use automatic. OK, uh, so I'm interested in looking at, you know, the uh, those uh, countries with high income, uh, low cases, and those countries with low income and those high cases. And I want to see the num their number of cases change and also how their rate change. OK, uh, so to simplify the the analysis, I'm going to remove those um, uh, uh, legend. OK, so now if I enable this one as a filter. OK, and you can see those are the um, uh, states that have low income and also high cases. And those are the states that are um, high income and also low cases okay so on the right side those uh, chart also both updated okay uh, so here i also have an idea so that um, let's also label those states okay and we only label states that are selected so now if we go to the dashboard okay that's pretty nice. OK, uh, so let's name this one uh, income worth rates at a state level. OK, so that's uh, so you can explore that different states and see how their rate changes. OK, um, let's also uh, create another uh, dashboard. OK, sorry, and I think I just uh, realize that we uh, missed one sheet. So let's create an, our last sheet. Remember that we created um, uh, this table calculation that is number of the weeks. OK, so here we want to show that the number of cases after uh, several weeks when we when they have the first cases so that we see that how many weeks after several weeks, uh, how number of cases they have in each state. So let's drag the date into the detail. We are bringing the number of the weeks into the columns and also sum the cases into the rows. And because this is a table calculation, so let's edit table calculation. And here we are using the specific dimension. That is a year. OK. And let's move on to the week number. OK, and let's update this and now let's change that one to line so that is uh, so number of the weeks after the first cases that being reported and also uh, so that is the x-axis and the y-axis shows a number of the case total number of cases that in that week okay we can see that right now we are in the week of 53 okay so this is the number of the cases we have and uh, now if we drag the states into labels, and now we can see that New York has a peak. Uh, 
in the week six and um, Hawaii I, I guess has also a peak that in the first week and next Florida Texas and also California other states that has peak on in the second range a uh, second um, wave and now we can see California Texas okay and New York Florida also uh, have their third peak okay so this one let's call it uh, cases after number of weeks okay sorry I, I totally forgot <laughs> on this one all right and let's also put that into entire view so now let's go back to the dashboard and this case I want to use a uh, dashboard I want to see that the income at the state level but how that is related to the different state that is number of cases you know over the different time and I also want to see the case rate um, and also the death rate okay uh, so to simplify this one so you can put that one to the float Okay, so that is the case rate. And for the death rate, we can also put that one as a float. Okay, so that we won't make this one larger. Uh, again, we make uh, this as a filter. So now let's select uh, those states. Okay, we can see those are the states at location of those states. Uh, and let's select the states in this quarter. And we can see those are the states. Okay, and this one, let's say um, income versus uh, weeks at a state level. Okay, uh, I know those are not the best titles, but you know, um, it just gives them a title, just reminding me that to distinguish those uh, different uh, dashboard. Okay, so our last dashboard so here let's say we want to look at the cases at the county level okay uh, so let's bring uh, the income worth cases at the county level and now let's bring the other maps at the county level as well so uh, that is income okay and that's read okay um, and also case rate okay uh, so here I yeah just to simplify those analysis I just remove all those legend which should not be the best practice but okay let's also fill out the data that do not have those locations okay again this is just a quick demo that how we can make in some analysis at the county level and here, uh, let's also add a reader, uh, a filter. So uh, actually, it doesn't matter which one to add filter from. So here, let's say I will, I will use it, this sheet, the scatter plot, and I will show the filter. And I will put this one um, as a Thing, sorry not the county I should use filter for the state sorry uh, so filter uh, state okay and let's change the filter so change this one to a drop down list okay uh, let's see if we can we can also apply this one to all uh, all the sheet that are using uh, uh, so this data so let's select the sheet uh, so okay that's very nice all right so now you can see we are looking at Arkansas and if you look at the Virginia okay uh, let's see if we can make that one to be float okay so that's better Okay, uh, so this one, let's name it uh, rates at counties. All right, uh, so now we have uh, those 
so we, we did a lot of stuff in this uh, in this week's lab. So we use we clean the data. We do the, some data um, uh, calculations, and we create several sheets. So when we creating those sheets, we also use a table calculation combined with a field calculation. So now I think it is a uh, time that we can explore the data. So we have those different sheets. Okay, I think you also have some places that you are interested or some states or counties you are interested or some variables that you are interested um, so however so in the dashboard so if i have let's say i have this snapshot that i want to uh, display to the audience and uh, so for example if i want to compare the state between west virginia and also virginia okay so do I need to create two dashboards? No, it is not necessary. So so that is where the story will be very, very helpful. So now let's start to create our story. OK, so let's give the title. COVID-19 in United States. OK, so this is a very vague title. This is not a great title. But um, just give you the idea that how we can use stories. Okay, so let's first. Now you can see all the visualizations are here. Uh, so uh, you can drag those sheets or the dashboard into the visualizations. So first, let's see um, the most important. Uh, probably the one that I really want to highlight is this one. Okay, and we can see that those are the. Uh, states that have high income, lower case rate, and those are the states that have a low income and also high case rate. So if I use click and I can select highlight those count, um, uh, those states, okay, and I can add a caption. So those are the states with you know uh, low or high. income but high and low case rates okay uh, you can write better <laughs> a description than me but the key is here so once we have this one and if I hit update so now you can see those states are highlighted but if I go back to the dashboard or even a sheet that are using those okay that use in the stories, you can see those are not being highlighted. So that is a, a feature of the story. So that the selected feature that on story will be kept as a snapshot and will not be updated back to the uh, to the dashboard. OK, so anything that you changed on the story will not come back to the bad dashboard. However, so if you make some change on the dashboard or the sheets, those change will update on the story. So for example, if I create a new uh, story and here if I bring the income range here, OK, and now if I go to the income range here and if I remove this um, card and also if I change the colors, OK, uh, let's see if I change the color to orange, OK. And now if we go to the story and we can see those changes has been updated. OK, uh, by the way, let's also make this income range uh, to our entire view so that will look better in the story. OK, uh, so for the story, uh, let's also use automatic. OK. Uh, so here you can add a caption for this story. So uh, let's see that uh, most cases or deaths in the are in the middle income range. Okay. Again, if you make some selections and if you choose update, and those updates will not be back to the sheet. 
OK, so now hopefully you have a, a bad idea of the um, stories. Uh, so now let's bring some sheet to our uh, um, dashboard. So for example, let's create a new sheet. And here, let's bring this dashboard here. OK, and here, let's say we want to select uh, those states. OK, so those are the read and also um, for the reads for high income states. OK, and let's update. OK, so you can compare the reads and let's duplicate this one and let's select uh, states that this is a reads for low income states. OK, and uh, you can see now if you compare those difference, you can see that actually um, the read are not significantly different. Actually, for the for the case rate is is much lower, um, but for the death rate, um, both groups have the similar death rates, but case rates are much lower for the high income states. And also, you can see for the trend, so that for the high income states, so they all have the second waves. Um, for the low income states, um, looks like. Uh, uh, it's hard to see here. So they have the smaller second first wave and also very big the second wave. Okay, so you can bring those into those descriptions or you can add uh, additional text. Okay, so just type what if you want to show those explanations. Okay, and let's also add another um, dashboard. So here, let's say we want to see where are those uh, high income states. And looks like they are all um, in the East Coast. OK, they are all in the East Coast. So location of high income states. OK, and update. And let's also duplicate that one. And now you will know that where are the location of the low income states. So that is location of low income states. OK, and you can see where are they and also how the trend look like. OK, so for the high income, so they have very big first wave. And for those low income, they have um, the the so comparing to the second wave, the, their first wave is smaller. OK. All right, uh, now let's add another one. So in this case, we are going to see the cases that for different state at the county level. So this is where the, the story is extremely helpful. So here, let's say again, I'm very interested in the scenario of the Virginia. So let's, this is VA. Okay, and so for Virginia, a very interesting story that we can tell is that, so for the for the counties that have higher income, they have lower case rate, and also they have lower death rate. And you can see this county does not have a, a, a map that because remember that there's a one Virginia county that we cannot find out of the FIPS from census website. And also for the counties that have lower, relatively lower income, and so they, they have higher death rate and also higher uh, case rates. And if you want, you can also bring um, the races, the, the race is, and also the gender, okay, immigration status, etc., and combine those data together, and that can help you better understand um, how the COVID data, COVID-19, affect um, uh, people in different areas. Okay, so let's duplicate this one. And here you can choose a different state that you want to compare with. Uh, so I think I saw Rhode Island has a very, has a similar, exactly similar pattern. So you can see that the income and also case rate 
are exactly the opposite. OK, so that is root island. OK, and also you can add the more states. So uh, for example, here, uh, if you want to look at, um, uh, let's say, Texas. OK, and if you can also look at the best Virginia. OK, you can see a lot of states that they have the similar patterns. Uh, and also, for example, I want to see the California. OK, and also New York. OK, so let's just use this one as New York. All right, uh, so that is how we can use stories. So you can display this, your findings um, to your audience. OK, so go through the visualizations. And I think that is a pretty great uh, project. OK. And finally, so now we can let's hide those other sheets. We know that we have a lot of sheets and also dashboard. So let's hide those stuff. So let's see, see if we can hide those sheets. So we want just keep the story. Remember that if a sheet is not used in any dashboard or story, you cannot hide that sheet. Okay, because if you hide that sheet, uh, you cannot find that sheet again. Okay, uh, and also let's see if I can hide the dashboard. Okay, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the reason I want to hide those stuff is because um, because we have uh, so many um, sheets and also dashboards, so that that might be confused uh, for your audience when you are when they're looking at your stories. Um, okay, so here I just keep the the story here, and also if you want to find out those uh, dashboard or the sheets, you can always go to the uh, the story that contains those sheets, and also you can go to check those sheets or dashboard. All right, uh, finally, let's save it. And let's upload this story to uh, Tableau Online. OK, so I already signed in with uh, my account. So I just published this workbook. OK, and remember that you are using your first name, last name, and also lab 9. OK, and let's publish. OK, and you can see because you are, we have a lot of data, so we are going to publish this number of the data, which is fine. So let's continue. OK. <clears throat> OK, so here uh, I'm going to uh, I just went uh, log to the uh, Access Online. Actually, when you upload it, so you will be direct to the Access Online. And now if you open the story, OK, and if you click those stories and you can just go through those stories and you can uh, use that one as a presentation, OK, to explain the data or your findings uh, to your audience. OK, so that is for this lab.